Hi everyone, today we are going to be making my 15 minute wow cowl crochet pattern. This is an easy 15 minute pattern for any experienced crocheter or it's a great first pattern for anyone that's brand new to crochet. You can make this cowl if you've never crocheted before. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to make this cowl. It uses just one stitch, the chain stitch, and I'm using it making this amazing new uh, yarn from Lion Brand and it's called Wow. Here you can see I have a few different colors just to give you an idea of what it looks like. I have the fuchsia is bright which is this pink and then the blue is mermaid's tail and avocado toast is the green. You can use a 25 millimeter crochet hook that's the size that's recommended with this yarn or you don't have to use a crochet hook with this pattern if you don't want to. It's up to you. I got my hook from Michaels. They usually have them there. But I'm going to be using my finger to crochet this cowl. I'm going to be using a finger crochet technique. But you're welcome to use a 25 millimeter hook if you would like to. I'll show you both techniques in just a minute. So we are only going to need one skein of this yarn. You can see here what it looks like chained up a little bit. But you're just going to need one skein, and we are going to use the entire thing. There will be no waste with this project. You can see it's a number 7 jumbo weight yarn, and it recommends a 25 millimeter hook, which I have here. And again, we can use that, or you can do what I did and just use your finger. I'm going to be working with this green avocado toast colorway. And just find the end, and we're going to make a slip knot. So the way that you do that is you loop your yarn around. And once you have a loop, you need to reach through the loop and grab that tail, but don't pull it all the way through. Hang on to your working yarn and your bottom tail there and just pull that loop through the first loop. I did this a little too close to the end here. We want the end to be just long enough to tuck back in and weave in, so I'm going to work a little bit further up. Again, make a loop, reach through the loop, grab your yarn, and then pull it through. This is how you make a slip knot. Feel free to rewind or pause and try it yourself. Now go ahead and grab your hook, insert it into the slip knot, and then tighten onto your hook. Now we're going to begin chain stitching. So all you're going to do to chain stitch is wrap the yarn around the back of the hook. That's yarn over. And then we're just going to use the hook to pull that loop through the first loop on your hook. And that is one chain stitch. We're going to continue chain stitching. We can see how it looks here with a lot of chain stitches worked up. It looks like little V's. So we've worked one. And we're just going to keep chain stitching. So that's just yarn over, wrap around the back, and pull through. And yarn over, pull through. And you're just going to chain a very, very long chain. Now, you can do this with your hook if you are an experienced crocheter. Um, this might feel a little cumbersome and awkward to you. It did for me at first because this yarn is so huge and the hook is so huge. Um, it kind of takes a minute to get used to and it takes a little bit of elbow grease to maneuver that hook around. The muscle memory is a little bit different, but you are welcome to continue in this method with the hook if you want to. If you don't have a 25 millimeter hook or uh, you just would prefer to finger crochet, I'll show you how I do that now. You just insert your finger into the loop tighten your slip knot onto your finger and then you're going to yarn over on your finger and pull it through. You kind of bend your finger to pull it through just as if your finger was the hook. So yarn over and then you kind of hook your index finger by bending it and then you pull that yarn through. Now because this yarn is so huge you do kind of have to wiggle it and um, work with it a little differently than if you were finger crocheting a lighter weight yarn. But we can see here that now this is looking exactly like my sample in the white color. That white color is called non-dairy creamer, um, by the way. So you're just going to continue. We're just going to chain most of the skein of this yarn. Now I'm going to continue here in real time so that you can see exactly how long this is taking me. Uh, this video is a tad over 15 minutes long, but I did have that introduction um, introducing you to the project. And then I did um, start with the hook and switch to my finger. So I got this done in less than 15 minutes. It's really, really easy for an experienced crocheter or a new crocheter. We're just going to keep continuing finger crocheting this chain. You can see how it should be looking. It's just going to be one long uh, chain for most of the skein. I will catch up with you um, when we get 
toward the end, you're going to crochet almost the end. I didn't count how many chains I have. Basically, we want this um, chain stitch to wrap around our neck about four times. If you were making this uh, and you wanted it to be a bit looser, Cal, and not so tight around the neck, or if you are making it uh, for a loved one and you're not sure how they'd like it to fit, you could wrap it just three times, but on me, um, with my frame and size, I preferred wrapping it four times, and that's kind of an average size or average look. You could easily manipulate this pattern also to be a kid's size um, cowl or scarf. You would just do a little bit shorter chain uh, to allow for their smaller size, but it would be a really easy adjustment to make and it would be even faster because you wouldn't be chaining as much. So you can see here I'm just working all of these chains. Once you do a few of these stitches with the finger crochet you get faster and faster especially if you're a new crocheter it might take you uh, longer than 15 minutes to make this cowl but it st should still take you um, well under an hour to finish even if you've never crocheted before you should still finish up rather quickly. I do also want to take a moment to talk to you about this yarn. This is a yarn that um, most of you probably haven't tried yet. It's brand new from Lion Brand. Right now it's only available on lionbrand.com, um, but it is an amazing yarn called Wow. It's brand new. There are a few patterns online in addition to mine um, on the Lion Brand website using this yarn. There's one for a hat and a pillow. Um, and another kind of wrap scarf that's not a cowl, but there are some available patterns. It's really fun to work with. It's very soft and cushy um, and marshmallowy, and it comes in some great colors. There are a few great neutrals. There's uh, three different tones of gray. There's a navy, and then there's that fuchsia, the teal, and the green that I'm using. Those are probably my favorite, and then a great creamy white color. This yarn is a number seven weight um, jumbo yarn. So there are not a lot of jumbo weight yarns on the market. They're a little bit more difficult to find. You can find chunky weight yarns pretty excessively in a lot of craft stores, but this jumbo weight yarn is a newer kind of trend happening now. And it's definitely one of those that I think we're going to see more and more, especially from big brands like Lion Brand. Now this one is 70% acrylic and 30% wool. Um, so it does have a bit of wool in it, which really lends to the softness and the texture that's going on here. And because of the nature of this yarn being so unique and so different, it is $19.99 a skein. So I will go ahead and acknowledge that. But honestly, it's completely well worth the price. And with this pattern in particular, you have a great handmade cowl that you can whip up probably faster than just about anything else. It whips up so fast. And I think that this is definitely one that you'll get asked about and get questions about and a lot of people that you know will want uh, to know how you did it or want one for themselves because this is one of those trends that's happening now with the extra big squishy jumbo yarn. So in my opinion, it's totally well worth it to have a really beautiful scarf that works up so, so quickly in such a high quality yarn that you really can't find anywhere. So now at this point I have chained um, a pretty long chain here. You need it to wrap around your neck four times. So here you can see how long my chain is just roughly. I've chained almost the entire skein, not the whole thing, but looking at my finished sample here we can see that there are four kind of ropes of chains that are making up my cow. So you can see that there are four here and they're just kind of wrapped around each other. And then I have a little bit of a shorter piece of chain stitched um, kind of braided looking rope that's wrapping around and kind of holding things together and holding things in place with this uh, nice side piece that's wrapped twice. So you can see here that this is just kind of tied around holding things in place. So now what we need to do to form the rest of our cowl, you can see how much yarn I have left over from the skein. So go ahead and make sure that your chain is long enough to wrap around four times comfortably. Even if you're making this for someone else, I really recommend testing this around your own neck. For the sake of um, video purposes, I'm just going to wrap it here on my work table 
but um, I do recommend wrapping it around your own neck and kind of measuring things out and making sure that you have enough to wrap around four times. You can add a few extra chains if you need to or take some out. Um, it really kind of depends on how tightly you're finger crocheting or crocheting with the hook. That's why I'm not going to give you an exact specific uh, number of chains. So just kind of eyeball it. It'll still come out beautiful and perfect even if it's not exactly identical to mine. Now you can see here we have one, two, three, and four ropes of chains all looped around each other. I've just kind of wrapped it concentrically um, and gotten them all kind of even. Now what we need to do is just attach this and tie it up. So go ahead and take some scissors and you're going to finish off this yarn. So for all of you brand new crocheters, all you're going to do is snip the yarn, give yourself maybe six inches or so Cut your yarn. You can see what the inside of this yarn looks like here and how squishy and soft it really is. Um, and what we're going to do to finish this off is just insert your finger into the loop and then yarn over and pull it through as if you're making another chain, but then just pull that tail all the way through and that will finish off your yarn. You can tighten the stitch, just kind of pull down on it there. And all we're going to do is tie these tails in a knot. So we want to tighten it, but we don't want it too tight, um, just where things kind of meet up and sit nicely. This knot is not going to show, no one's ever going to see it, so don't worry about that. We're just tying that in a knot, make sure it's nice and tight. And then to weave in these ends, um, usually we would use a tapestry needle, but I uh, could not find one that could thread this yarn and would work. So I just figured out that if I just tuck these tails kind of in and out of the chains, it seems to work well enough. It doesn't seem to slip a whole lot, this yarn. Um, being that it's really soft, it doesn't seem to really slip or move a whole lot. It just kind of grips the yarn that's next to it, and I haven't had any issues with this coming undone. But if you did find a tapestry needle that was large enough, you could um, weave in these ends traditionally. So just weave it through a few stitches, and then you can trim that end. And so the body of our cowl is done. The only thing we have left to do is we just need to crochet the little loop that's going to keep all of this in place. Now you could stop at this point, you could just leave your cowl just like this um, if you wanted to, but I wanted to add a little bit of extra detail. This is a very, very easy little finishing touch that um, really just finishes it and makes it look nice and polished. And it holds things together nicely too, especially if you're giving it to someone um, it kind of holds the shape and is great. So we're going to create another slip knot with the rest of our yarn. And this looks like really a scrap amount, but it's plenty to do this little loop. So all we're going to do is we created a slip knot and we're just going to chain the rest of this yarn. So I have probably maybe three yards, three or four yards of yarn left. Um, and I'm just going to chain through all of it until I have a little bit of a tail left, just enough to finish off and weave those tails back in. So go ahead and finish chaining and that should be just about perfect and then I'm just going to pull that tail through, tighten it so we've finished off that yarn and then now I'm just going to weave this um, short little loop. I'm going to wrap it around twice so you might need to tighten things a little bit and kind of manipulate it into fitting around there twice. And then we're going to do the same thing we did with the initial uh, loop. We're just going to tie this in a knot on the back of our work. There's really no distinctive front and back side, so don't fret too much about that. Tie this in a knot and then we're just going to weave it back in to these loops. And once you weave those ends back in, this cowl is finished. We've just used one stitch, the most basic crochet stitch there is. It will be the first stitch that you would learn in a um, crochet introductory course. Or if you were to try to teach yourself crochet, it would always be the first stitch you'll learn. So now you've created an entire project that's beautiful and um, well worth the 15 minutes you spent making it with just this one easy stitch. So now that we have finished, this is what it should look like. I have both my samples here and they look identical and they were done super quickly and easily. And being that we spent $20 on this one skein of yarn, I do have here my waist. So from weaving in those ends, this is all of the yarn that I wasted, so every little bit really got used on this project. 
Thank you so much for watching my 15 minute wow cal crochet tutorial. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more crochet videos.